This is Kelly Hill, technology reporter with RCR Wireless News. I'm here today with Paul Carter, who is president and CEO of Global Wireless Solutions. And we are going to be talking about some of the testing that they've been doing recently in the New York City subway system. How are you doing, Paul? Good, thanks. Nice to see you, Kelly. Great, nice to talk with you. Um, so let's, let's start out with some context. So Transit Wireless has been working on this project to expand wireless coverage at New York City subway systems. It's, uh, I think it's in phase, uh, phase four right now. They're going through five. So they are planning to cover 279 underground stations by 2017. Um, so that's in process. So let's talk about the testing that you guys did and, and, and some of the things that you found. Okay, sure. Well, so Kelly, as you know, we're mobile network testing specialists. So we had been testing um, on the New York subway last year, 2014, in the summer. And we tested um, a number of the lines on, in Manhattan. Um, last year, we, we tested we're using the same sort of equipment that we, we um, used this year, which was um, a backpack solution that allows us to collect up to six devices at a time. We could do voice and packet data if needed, um, and we get all the network level layer three information as well. So when we performed this test last year, we actually performed the tests from, uh, actually on the trains. Um, we were on the, riding the subway and going through the stations as they stopped and as they set off again. Um, and we found, of course, that uh, obviously a number of the stations and all the lines didn't have any coverage at all. Um, but actually, it turned out that the way that Transit Wireless have deployed their network, they've actually only deployed it in the stations themselves. So we last year, I think we, there were about 40 or so stations where there was coverage. So we thought it would be interesting again to, to perform the test uh, 2015, a year later, and see you know how things have changed. So um, they, 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 they were publicly uh, announced 67 stations were supposed to be on air with Wi-Fi. Um, and so we tested at those stations. We actually tested um, about another 30 stations just to verify, you know, some of them, the, if you look at the map of actually, I'll show you the map. Um, hopefully you can see that here. This is a, this is a sort of a map of Manhattan. Um, the green dots showing the stations that are active with Wi-Fi and the red are not active. Um, and so we had tested, we tested basically all of these green stations. Um, and we also tested a number of those red stations, particularly in the southern part of, of Manhattan, just to verify um, that there wasn't any signal there um, in, in, anyhow. But of, of those 67 stations we tested, um, it turns out that only that six of them were incorrectly listed on their website from Transit Wireless. Um, but uh, but interestingly enough, even though they, there wasn't any Wi-Fi in those six stations, there was, wi uh, was wireless coverage from the wireless for the four operators in uh, pretty good, in, in um, about three of them. Um, so so, that, so that's, the, that's sort of the background of the test. Okay, great. And so let's talk about some of the results. Um, I think you guys found that uh, the Q line um, has the best overall service uh, on mobile phones. Um, let's talk a little bit about, what, about uh, the results that you got. Sure. Well, um, absolutely. So in terms of the overall results, uh, the best lines in Manhattan that we tested were the Q, the B, the R, the N, and the A. And the worst lines were the 5, the 4, the Z, the J, and the 6. These were the worst overall. Um, if you look at the breakdown of best and worst for cellular versus or mobile versus tran the transit wireless Wi-Fi, um, some of these lines differ a little bit. Um, but overall, um, that in, in terms of the, the, the throughputs and the performance, I would say it was actually uh, quite encouraging. Um, there are about 40, 42 of the stations uh, out of the 62 that did have Wi-Fi. Uh, 42 of those had 100% um, task success rate for um, both AT&T and T-Mobile. They were the, the, the most reliable, if you like, in those stations. Um, and the throughputs that we saw, so we, we, we did a variety of different tests in, in, in these uh, stations, upload, downloads, capacity test, ping, and all this, uh, browser tests, that sort of thing. But in terms of throughputs, um, we, we were seeing throughputs of somewhere between 16 and 19 meg download speeds in those stations where we saw these 100% success rates. Um, on average, across all of the stations, um, the mobile downlink throughputs were just under 13 megabits per second um, uh, on the downlink, which was higher than the, the Wi-Fi, which was just under nine, nine megabits per second. Um, on the uplink, the Wi-Fi was a little faster than the, the mobile, 
at just under eight megabits per second, where the mobile was just under six. But whichever way you look at this, is average throughputs, and this is we're not talking about capacity throughputs here. So a lot of times, um, when you when people quote throughputs, they're quoting capacity throughputs or sort of network maximum throughputs available. These are just re re regular throughputs. So to see such high throughputs in general, I, I think is really good news. Um, particularly as in you know most of these stations the success rates were really good and um, across all the wireless operators and the Wi-Fi so we, we sort of came up when we our ranking we came up with a, a sort of a ranking to, to rank these lines based on number of state number of stations on the line that had uh, Wi-Fi active um, looked at the throughput averages for downlink and uplink combined looked at the task success rate and then com uh, compared both Wi-Fi and uh, the network mobile networks together as well. So it's sort of a conv convoluted um, methodology, but um, it, that's what came out with you know the lines that I mentioned earlier. Okay, and we should mention that these are underground stations. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about the, about that environment and and what makes it a challenge. Well, absolutely. So uh, you know, obviously, um, well, I think all of these uh, these lines were underground, um, and so basically, as we described before, you described Transit Wireless is building out their own little system there um, for for Wi-Fi and their own. I think they call it base station hotel, something like that, um, which they they allow then the wireless operators, the AT and T, Verizon, and so on, to come and build out their own systems underground, because clearly. Um, when you build a wireless network, um, traditional networks have rooftop antennas or uh, antennas on towers, um, and they, you know they to try and serve a broad area. But obviously, um, while multi, you don't need line of sight and you do rely on multipath, um, but it is still a challenge to provide signal underground. Uh, the signal has to obviously penetrate through you know the walls and down into the, the subterranean levels, and that's a challenge. So uh, these built these. Um, the Transit Wireless have been, uh, and the wireless operators combined, have been building out a custom network essentially down in, in this, in, in the DAS network down in these basement, in these subways. Okay, great. Um, anything else that jumped out at you in terms of, I thought it was really interesting that you guys looked at both the cellular and the Wi-Fi aspects of this. Yeah, I mean, you know, clearly, uh, you know, in some, some uh, metro subways around the world, um, people have deployed uh, Wi-Fi networks, and, and in most cases, I think those Wi-Fi um, are probably subscription-based Wi-Fi's. So what's nice here is that um, it's not just the Wi-Fi, but it's also the, the cellular operators are building out as well. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, in some cases, while in some of these stations, the Wi-Fi actually wasn't available yet, but the, the, it clearly it seems the wireless operators have already gone ahead and built in those in those cases too. So I, I, I think that's really positive. And the fact that we're seeing such amazing success rates and throughputs, it's a little bit, um, we did a study earlier this year um, for St. Patrick's Day in New York bars, uh, Irish bars in New York. Um, and it was a similar sort of situation. It was quite surprising, if you like, in these um, indoor bars, or whatever, we were seeing, you know, almost 100% LTE in, in all these operators, uh, and also, you know, pretty good throughputs and success rates. So, basically, the, the networks operators have, have sort of continued deploying underground, um, and so that is good news. The thing is, though, of course, as you mentioned, there are 279 stations to be deployed by 2017. Um, and uh, we're at 60 something now. So uh, I, I think Transit Wireless say they're uh, ahead of schedule or on schedule, but they've obviously a lot to do in the, you know, the next couple, couple of years to actually deploy you know, 200 more stations. Um, so that will be interesting to, to sort of unfold and see and watch that, that, you know, that go on. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think it's encouraging and, and it's encouraging to see um, the performance improving and it's encouraging to see the operators uh, making that investment for the subway. Okay. Great. Well, Paul, thank you so much for your time and, and the insights on the testing. Thank you. You're welcome.